Hello, my toothy tunnelers. It is turn number 67. I'm playing a Skaven Blight in an all Warhammer Nations game of Dominions 5. Let's crack on. Research and alteration is complete. We've now got uh, Fog Warriors, I think, is the most important thing there. Let's have a look. Did we get anything else exciting? Alteration 7. Fog Warriors, uh, Marble Warriors is um, situationally useful for us. Doom is obviously good and we can cast that. Bone Grinding is excellent, but um, quite hard for us to cast. We can do Bone Grinding. And of course, Phoenix Pyre is very nice on uh, some of our Fire Mages. We've got some Lords of Fire, uh, Kings of Elemental Fire and things like that. It's good on those. Cloudtropy's Nephele onto that throne. Uh, cast Send Lesser Horror onto a different throne to test it out. Uh, re-upped on our King of Banefires that got killed in a retreat and cast a Dome of Solidaire on one of our Throne Provinces and we'll be doing that on another Throne Province and we'll just keep doing that, getting Domes of Solidaire up on our Thrones to protect them from people teleporting in and the like. Cast a Mix of Thousand Boxes, which is a good little Dom spreader and we can use it against Starnash um, potentially. Uh, got another Vermin Lord, uh, good as a teleporting fighter. We'll be doing some teleporting with him this turn and we teleported Kiwichi over to that same throne where Nephile had gone. They didn't leave anyone there though. I thought they were going to patrol with their guys and I was setting up uh, you know, forces that could fight their um, air elementals and the like, but they didn't send anything. So we've taken control of it and we've moved some sieging forces onto it as well. Our lesser horrors are fighting over here. So this is the throne that is protected by Kongol the Monolith, who is um, very nasty, can cast quite a lot of nasty stuff, and uh, a ton of watchers who spit out tons of lightning. So if you go to this province and want to fight here, you need to make sure that you can handle um, significant lightning damage, 20 plus lightning damage. You're going to need a lot of lightning resistance to make sure that doesn't kill you. So it's kind of something for multiple light shock resistance items to be queued up with. Um, yeah, and we've got a few Enki doing other bits and pieces around, but basically it's these guys. Uh, they're lots of um, inanimates, so something using the um, those big hammers that smash stuff. I can't remember what the name of it is. The one that's always confused with dwarven hammers, but the thing that does damage to inanimates can be used there to smash up them and smash up the monolith as well. So we're going to send some super combatants in after that one. Bit of sight searching, didn't find anything. Blood slave, blood economy continues uh, quite well. And then we've got a battle lizardman against Thadesh in the Royal Forest. This is lizardman using a vampire lord. So they've got their vampire lord engine going and they are casting vampire lords. Uh, it's just against province defense. So yeah, extremely risk-free use of Horde of Skeletons, Blast of Unlife um, to take out province defense. Very effective use of the vampire. To be honest, he could probably just flown in there and killed them all in close combat because Invulnerability 25 makes vampires extremely difficult to deal with. I'm glad that I have some vampires and some wraith lords, so I can be annoying with them if I want to be. Battle in the Obsidian Waste. This was us um, getting rid of a set of knights that had uh, besieged one of our thrones. And we just sent a ton of evocation guys after this. And I used the accurate single target evocation, so incinerates uh, mostly. So we're just going to see incinerates coming in and blasting these knights and soul slays and things. So very straightforward, risk free way of getting rid of the enemy there. Nice easy one. Lost some giant rats, doesn't matter. We took Palame, that was um, our vermin lord moving on top of one of their forts. But then the high elves attacked it, which is interesting. We were scripted to deal with um, just uh, a load of mundane units. So we've got our Truffle Puff the Vermin Lord here. He is scripted with Body Ethereal Invulnerability Soul Vortex, I imagine. Probably Soul Level Vortex is second in that order. Let's have a look. Yep, Soul Vortex. Uh, he gets attacked by the Prince of the Great Eagle. If he had had magic weapons, he actually could have been quite good here. But um, against this level of protection against mundane attacks and at these stats, um, you know, he's got the ability to repel and everything, and a Soul Vortex up as well. He doesn't do very well, and he immediately starts getting hit. So he's crippled already. We've also got uh, a big hill giant, a big chunk of hit points there. And they have the Phoenix Guard. The Phoenix Guard are pretty nasty, but again, no magic weapons. Because no one's got any magic weapons, he's really not a risk for any of these guys. Some Clockwork Soldiers as well, but they're already tired out. And the Soul Vortex is able to feast on these uh, Mercenary Macemen. So if we do take, I think he takes a, yeah, he takes a hit there, but he quickly regenerates it back. So 
pretty straightforward, and the fear routes the rest of them. No problems, we keep hold of that province, and we get to see a battle in Lyratos. So Lyratos is Slanesh attacking Lizardmen, and we can see on the map, um, I'll show you in a moment, but the uh, Slanesh is being besieged by the Lizardmen. I don't have any spies or scouts or anything there, so I can't actually see what's happening, but this is just some Chaos Warriors taking out some more province defense. Very simple stuff. The back and forth between those two factions, it's good that they're fighting, keep them distracted. Lost a whole load of our population in Namor. So Namor used to have over 10,000 and it doesn't anymore because they've gone off to be blood slaves and slanesh. And we've got some unexpected events. Uh, Suthu, disease is spreading. No oh well. Kratos, lost 20 population. This is more of these plague events. And then we've got another Warpstone team. So uh, another bit of ridiculous gem income, but of course we're not spending it uh, like crazy because... It would just all end up in uh, giving loads to the Lizardmen through Arcane Nexus. Now, we'll put up with a certain degree of that, but I don't want to go crazy and just give them unlimited gems. That would be bad news for us, I think. So, unexpected event in Midland, and we have prevented a great disaster uh, using one of our Grey Seers. Where was that? Oh, in our capital, of course. It's always good when that happens. Um, the unexpected event in Midland was some squares caught and interrogated, seemed to be preparing for a large scale attack. Fine. And uh, another disaster prevented by another Grace here. Excellent stuff. We've started to destroy the fort in Sulfuria. We've not destroyed the fortification in Palame. Uh, a couple of our guys died from disease, and a couple of our vampires have come back. I think they're over here. Here's one of them. You're now in Mriska's unit. So, what are we doing this turn? Well, the main thing, of course, is we're still trying to make our kind of throne rush to win the game. So we are cloud trapezing, um, where is she? We're cloud trapezing Aella over here to get within range of cloud trapezing over here because she will be able to pick up items from the laboratory and come over here and do some damage. Now, I should make sure that she's got access to items that will be useful um, because the other ones may not be in places that have a lab because I'm kind of teleporting some guys around and moving some guys around. So I'm just going to have a check of what items I've actually got available for her. Ring of Returning, well maybe. Marble Armor is good for her. We can give her a Smasher, which is of course great against um, the Monolith and a great against the uh, Watchers. We need to make sure that she has enough shock resistance to get through those 20s. Well, 24 is pretty good, but possibly we could put another one on her. We could give her a Storm Spool. That would give her more shock resistance and make them completely immune to the Watcher's stuff. I think we probably want a Ring of Regen available for her. That would be a good idea. Um, what else could she use? She could use a good helmet. That would be useful. And yeah, uh, a, so smash her in one hand, maybe a shield in the other. We could give her... Shield of Gleaming Gold's not very exciting. We could just give her two smashes. She's just going to be flying over and smacking the... Um, Watchers and monoliths and things, and just hitting them over and over. So maybe, yeah, maybe just two smashes, to be honest. To just really smash into them and kill them as quickly as possible. At close range against the monolith, it could be casting all kinds of nasty stuff against her. But um, we're just going to have to take the risk on that. So maybe a helmet. Do I have anyone who can forge her a good helmet? Let's go and have a quick look. It would be nice to use a, a uh, Warlock Engineer. Let's try Pain Claw. Got a spare dwarven hammer? Yeah, let's forge something here. A good helmet for her. Crown of the Titans gives her, makes her bigger. That doesn't actually do anything because she's already size 6. So that is no good. Um, an iron face is possibly a bit too hard for me to make. An iron face would be good because then she wouldn't have to have marble armor. Do I have my... So I could give her then elemental armor and an iron face. That would be a very good combination of things. And that would free up a misc slot um, for amulet of anti-magic or something along those lines. We're forging a crown of titans here. I think instead of doing that, I'm going to put earth boots on uh, Mr. Global Rat. And he can forge an iron face premium bit of technology there for the air elemental to protect against various things. And uh, we've got a firebrand coming, potentially useful. Maybe we need some more anti-magic. 
resistance. Mr. Painclaw, what could you make for her? So elemental armor, I've already got one of my god, but I could use another one. That would be absolutely fine to use elemental armor. It's generally useful. She doesn't have any feet, so no foot slot stuff. Mm -hmm. Lodestone amulets. Two smashes in hands. Yeah, I mean, I think elemental armor would be a sensible thing for me to just have another one of, so I'll do it. I'm not going to worry too much about giving gems to the lizards. It's like, oh well. It's fine. Let's see what they can do with them. It's fun. Um, do we have another Ring of Regen getting forged? I believe we do some. Yeah, there's another Ring of Regeneration going up. Um, and then if we do have a spare hammer, which I suspect we may. We do still have a spare hammer, yeah. Take that hammer and forge. Amulet of Anti-Magic might be a good idea. Protects against all kinds of things, that. Amulet of Anti-Magic, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she can just go and fly over there and start smacking things with her twin hammers. That would be a useful thing for her to do. And she's probably going to have some help from a teleporting vermin lord or something along those lines, and she may have to wait a turn. Now, I was going to wait to try and hit as many thrones as possible all at once, but I am going to step ahead slightly here and hit this throne down here with a bunch of teleporters. So I am teleporting in uh, the following guys. Let's look at these. So that's Control T if you want to just script the currently selected commanders. So you can see we've got Crabangoon, Throt, uh, Bautufa, and Get and Barge. What they're going to be doing is They'll be going in with um, a couple of them who are thugged up, and they'll be doing two spells. One of them is doing anti-magic, then pull from the grave. The other is doing pull from the grave, pull from the grave. That's basically our big banishment spell, because there's tons of undead for us to use that on. Uh, and they're you know quite vulnerable to that kind of stuff. And then we have um, Throt One Eye is coming in at the back, doing Phoenix Power. He's already on... Um, three fire there he's you know he's got to be high astral to teleport in but then he's casting a bunch of will-o'-the-wisp to act as cover for what we're doing and then we've got another guy coming in and doing divine blessing and then a bunch of pull from the graves and he's got a penetration item to help him land those we also have another vermin lord teleporting in over here we have scritter and cinnamon cinnamon the bun or cinnamon thunder mouse which is named after one of my rabbits so cinnamon's just doing pull from the grave a bunch of those and scritter is coming in just doing a load of forward skeletons and he's uh souped up to do death magic so yeah sending in uh, a bunch of nice expensive stuff and they should be enough to secure this throne take out the enemy that'd be nice over here on this throne moving a big stack on top of it and i've got my guys um in position to uh, to keep it under siege and to fight anything that comes out. I think with all of the stuff we're moving on top of it, you know, we've got loads of stuff, loads of spells that will be useful against uh, fire ele uh, air elementals rather. So hopefully this will be enough to just take out the air elementals. I've not been very clever about my scripting. I'm not sending in stuff that's specifically to deal with air elementals. I just have things generally to deal with air elementals present. Uh, you are going to cast leeches, so you should be carrying some slaves. Not quite sure why you weren't. Are all of the rest of these correctly lined up? Yes, they look like they are. Got some Drain Lifes going off. Um, got some Thugs. And I've got Nefele is going to cast Fog Warriors round one and then attack Rear immediately to try and take out some of their stuff. I know that Azhag's going to be out here causing trouble, so I will, of course, be going after him. I think I may actually change her to... I could attack enemy Flyers. I'll just say attack Rear most because she might go and get the Mages. Uh, but yeah, let's hope that we can deal with whatever comes out of there. Um, Palame, I'm moving Trufflepuff out of because he's going to be doing some teleporting probably and coming down here to help with this. With some items to keep him from dying. Uh, we might not have enough shock resistance for him actually, given the number of watchers. Uh, could we just forge another ice? Yeah, you know what? Let's just forge another cheap air item. We don't need the um, booster to do this. Let's throw on a copper plate because that gives him the shock resistance that he needs and it's fairly useful on a vermin lord. So we'll just have another copper plate ready, please. And yeah, elsewhere, just kind of building up stuff, um, still moving stuff into these um, thrones and kind of buffing them up. 
So when I do go for more thrones, so I'm going to go for this one first. Obviously, I'll be going for the Slanesh one. I've been building up around there. I'll be going for this one with my anti-shock guys built to deal with watchers. And I will also be going for one in Lizards. I'll be going for this one, of course, the Orc and Goblin one that I've already got kind of under control. And I'll be going for Lizardman Throne as well. And I will generally be causing as much trouble as I can in the Lizardman territory with uh, my assassins and doing spy uprising stuff just being as distracting as i possibly can um in all of my various thrones i am recruiting people to try and keep the walls up you know plenty of wall defenders i'm going to do the same there yeah that's the plan still going for my throne rush and uh i think i'll be moving in some of my guys in terms of research i am going for evocation level nine because evocation level nine gets me one of my favourite and very amusing spells, Flame from the Sky, which I hope to just fire off all over the place. And uh, yeah, Chain Lightning as well, potentially I could be using, but basically Flame from the Sky is the one I'm interested in. Um, yeah. So that's more or less everything I have to say about this turn, and I will see you next turn. It's turn number 68. Let's see what's happening. So we have teleported successfully. We've got a Heliophagus. Uh, he is the Death Heliophagus. Um, we have teleported and cloud trapezed our force in on that throne. We've summoned up some fire snakes, some more cloud trapezing and teleporting, moving troops around to the various thrones, or mages around. And uh, we've discovered a hostile mage scrying upon our land, so that's one of our thrones is being scried. And we severed the cord of the astral mage, uh, rendering them insane for life. We've also put up in that same place that just got scried a dome of solid air. I suspect that that was a check to see if there are any domes there so we've got a dome of solid air going up and i'll see if i've got any i don't think i've got enough astral boosters to put up an arcane dome but um i will have a look in fact but let's do the other messages first so we've teleported into lost canyon range let's watch that so this is our attack on the throne that has tons of these um, shades and shadows and shade beasts and of course it has the Ananuki with the very nasty equipment and a bunch of wolf tribe. We have sent in a squad of four vermin lords, very strong, two grey seers. Um, we're getting our free corpse candles from, I think it's the lantern shield. Yeah, lantern shield and those are going to be useful. And I totally forgot to script this guy, so he's not going to do anything useful in this battle. But let's see what happens. So our plan was we have two thugs at the front and then we have some skelly spam and um, some kind of banishment spam and some will o the wisps which are going to keep these enemies away from us. So in comes the banishment spam, it is doing some good damage but there's still a lot of enemies left. So our thugs are going to move in at the front. As you remember we were relying heavily on uh, fire shields because they're very effective against these troops. At least I believe they are. Um, so they're at the front there. We've got our mage just casting buffs on himself uselessly. Because we totally forgot to do anything with him. We've got some wisps coming in from the side and it's distracted the Ananuki and some other things a little bit. And then um, at the back here. It's quite close. They're getting in real close to us. Our thugs are doing absolutely fine and not getting hit at all. And they're just slaughtering these troops at the front. But they've kind of swarmed round and they're going after our guys at the back. Like They've paralysed my um, silver order out. And in comes the Ananuki at the back. So this is not ideal. An enemy has reached one of my um, Grey Seers as well, who's got the Skull Staff. Yeah, it's not it's not ideal. This plan's not going fantastically well. Although at the front, our Vermin Lords are holding up absolutely fine, still killing lots of things. And we do have a little bit of spam here. So the Ananuki just took a smack in the face from a Dust to Dust, unscripted Dust to Dust from our from Cinnamon Thunder Mouse. Well done, Cinnamon. Thugs at the front still doing fine. This one at the back, who is less thuggy but is kind of more of a repel thug, is doing okay holding them off. Breath of the Dragon unscripted. Looks like that was another dust to dust, maybe. Control the dead. I could attempt to control the dead on her, I think. Now this mage, I think I casted I scripted them to advanced and cast spells, which was a very stupid thing for me to do. They had no need to do that, so they've just walked into a fight now. Uh, but by walking forward they may have saved themselves, because the other one, one with the um mostly fire magic and the uh, astral Skullcap just got wasted by the Ananuki there. Who has now reached our Vermin Lord. Let's hope we can rout them. Oh, he's taking some hits, but he's doing okay. The Vermin Lords at the front are doing fine. Because of the magic staff giving them good 
uh, attack and defense, they're doing okay here. I, it's incredible that they've survived, but I guess it's because these guys just do paralyze. They don't really do much damage. Or any damage, in fact, I think. And our thugs have finally routed to the enemy, so they are out of there. It looks like we just lost that one Grace here, which was completely avoidable. Um, but overall, very nice. Off they go. Watch them all route away. Well done, Vermin Lords. So we've taken a throne. So that's good news. Um, we've got the uh, got another Dome of Solidaire here. Uh, where are we? Blood Slaves. And then there's some battles. So this is Lizardmen taking out with a Vampire Lord some uh, Slanesh province defense. Then we've got uh, the orcs attacking us in Sulfuria. And I think the orcs have gone AI. The reason I say that is because I think they've just attacked, sallied out with everything. But none of these guys have any um, gems at all. So they should be doing lots of um, air elemental spam. But they're not. They've just come out to fight. And uh, I think this is just a ditch, last ditch thing. So they're obviously completely, completely screwed here. They don't stand a chance. Uh, but we can just fast forward through this. So loads of imps just fall on them and they get slaughtered. And they were casting lots of unscripted spells. They weren't doing anything good. We drive the enemy off the field. There we go. We got to see fog warriors go off, which was nice. So we uh, finished them off. We lost a devil and some imps. It doesn't matter. Then we see a battle in the Lissus lands. This is uh, its and forces taking out more province defense. So it's not going very well. They're basically getting conquered, Slanesh. And there's a battle in the world. Um which is a vampire lord knocking out Prompt's defense. So they are just vampire lording their defenses and they're just sending little raiding parties around to conquer everything. And then high elves attacked us in the place where I sent my god, funnily enough, just with some dribs and drabs. They're AI, of course. Um, and I've got a vermin lord and my god there, so you can guess that that doesn't go terribly well for them, huh? Vermin lord runs off to fight these guys. God flies to the back. Some fairly tough enemies coming in, and my god, there's some weird summons, you know, hill giant and so on. But um, yeah, the god continues to just wreck stuff. Well done to them. Yep, another two kills for them, and six for the Vermin Lord. Good work. Uh, some more people are eaten up by Slanesh's spell. And then we've got some uh, quite a lot of events here, actually. Um, we've got lots of plague events. Uh, none of them are terribly important. There's lots of just mackerels chasing sharks. Swallows chasing eagles, just weird stuff going off. Um, Skaven Blight got some free province defense. A temple was gained in Suthu, but then a temple was lost in. Where was it? Is it Mile Deep? Mile Deep, an earthquake destroyed the temple there. And then an event in Genom. So just a weird series of events, lots of stuff, very odd. Uh, and we got a battle in Midland. This is some knights attacking, so they just smash the patrolling troops and the promised defenders, so we'll just deal with those. They're very easy. I've got a um, king of elemental fire there who can deal with those easily enough. We discover a scout. Unfortunately, we have an Eshin assassin who got discovered, so this isn't great, and uh, it was one of our better ones. It was one that had the um, lifelong protection. So it's not great that they've seen that. That may provoke the Lizardman into doing something, uh, you know, setting orders to do something this turn. I'd still just been holding off because no one's really been stopping me from doing what I was doing in terms of going after thrones. I was holding off hoping I could people wouldn't notice and I could kind of avoid a war, but I think it may happen. I think I may have to do it. Uh, Plan is unharmed, but Sulfuria is breached. A will attack as everything just came out of that fort, so we'll just go and clear that up. We'll send in the Queen of uh, Elements Lair to deal with that. And then, yeah, lots of patrols and a bit of starvation. That's fine. I've already put the orders in to deal with starvation. So... What are we doing this turn? Well, we're reinforcing our thrones. Um, over here, I think I'm going to just accept that this one may get attacked. And so we are going to dump out a bunch of fire snakes. There we go. Big mass of fire snakes here. Uh, not really worried about the supplies or anything. That's going to give a load of fire gems to Itza, but oh well, that's life. Um, yeah, we haven't got any... Have we got any domes up here? We've got a Dome of Arcane Warding that will last five more months. That's fine. And, um, yeah, well, that's it for domes. Vano, could you put up a Dome of Air, please? Let's give you the air items. And then we have a 
what's it called? Dome of Solid Air. Bam. So we're going to throw up another dome on that province, although it's right next to them. They probably don't need to teleport into it. But, you know, the Lizardmen have probably got the astral travel spells now, so they can dump entire armies wherever they want. So we've got to be careful with that. Um, I may wish to move some more mages in there. That's not super well defended with mages and things if they did attempt to storm it. So maybe I'll just grab these mages and just throw them in to there. Do we want to bring some more troops? I don't want to bring rats, but we might want to bring some of these clan rats, to be honest. I'll just give some to those mages that are moving in there. Um, down here, I'm not attacking this throne this turn because, again, I'm tr I'm hoping that people are just not going to notice my kind of weird throne rush that I'm doing. Because if I can hold this throne and I take this, then next turn I'm going to go claim, 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 and that'll be enough thrones to win. Uh, so that'd be nice to do. But we'll see. Um, the only throne that I am making a move on is I'm cloud trapezing my Queen of Storms in with two smashes, uh, Iron Face, Elemental Armor, Ring of Regeneration, Amulet of Anti-Magic. And she is going to try and smash all of those Watchers and that Monolith. Just absolutely pound them with those. Uh, she is scripted to Mist Form Protection from Lightning Attack Large Monsters. The Protection from Lightning is just because she doesn't have perfect shock resistance. Uh, the Watchers could theoretically hurt her, I guess. Uh, so she's going over there, and she is going to be joined by Truffle Puff, who has got some shock resistance as well. He's got very nice shock resistance of 40, so totally immune, basically. Uh, Ring of Regen, cough, you know, Lead Shield and Firebrand, so he's got a bit of extra magic resistance, and he can kill stuff in combat. Um, and he actually does have some reinvigoration, which is good. And he is scripted to cast Body Ethereal, Soul Vortex, Blessing Attack. Uh, because there's Enkidu, so the Enkidu could get in there and then he could start eating them with a Soul Vortex. It won't work against all the other stuff. Yeah, so that's the plan. Hopefully those two can take it. If I lose the H3, that's going to be a problem that I won't be able to claim that throne. Um, but hopefully I'll have this throne and the throne over here that i just took so over here we're putting it into our positive dominion we're putting up a temple and a lab and we are casting three red seconds to throw up a fort here instantaneously because i think that'll be very useful um can we do some recruiting as well so we've just got some chaff to hold walls up i haven't really got enough gold spare well we'll just not recruit a mage or something because to be honest it doesn't matter at this point so if we just we'll just cut out the recruitment of some of those and then um There we go. Oh, ran out of recruitment points. So we'll just recruit a bunch of slaves for the purposes of holding up walls, basically. And I will throw in a bit of province defense. Why not? So they're keeping that one safe for me. Um, they are scripted with basically what they had before, which is probably not a great idea. So I should just change the scripts. I'll just pause and do that. OK, so I've scripted them. I've just put in anti-magic, some thunder strikes. Uh, Horde Skeletons with a bit of Phoenix Pyre from this um, Gracia, and then Soul Vortex Body, Vulnerability Soul Vortex Body Ethereal Attack on my Thugs, and some Shadow Blasts from Cinnamon here. Um, yeah, so that's so that I can uh, um, deal with, you know, some single targets. Whatever, basically whatever ends up here. I've just put up uh, what I can to interfere with them. So, that thrown... I'm trying to secure the fort. Hopefully, I won't be attacked by either this or uh, you know any of these other forces, but maybe it'll happen. And uh, this throne, I'll be going after these uh, shock-proofed two thugs. Uh, my god is just going to hang here for a second, I think. Um, although I could send her back to uh, where was it that got probed? It was Greendale, yeah. So it's interesting that Greendale got probed. Is that because the Lizardmen are going to jump onto it, or is that coming from the Dark Elves? Interesting. I'm not sure. Um, I could send my god back. That may be a good idea, to just throw them back. Uh, they can go in there and cast uh, Iron Walls to make the walls stronger and various things, and they can reinforce that bit. Might be a good idea. I just want to see if I've got... Oh yeah, here we go. Dome of Arcane Warding I'm throwing up as well. I did I did have the Astral Boosters for that, so I've put that up as well. I'm forging a Rave of the Sea here so that I can cast the Ice Dome as well, the water one. 
um, which I can't cast over here because I don't have my Water Mages in the right place to cast it. Thalassa's is over here, potentially about to go for this throne. Um, this seems to be kind of what's left of Slanesh. Like, they've got a blob over here, obviously. They were pretty big, and they had a bunch of stuff, but... Um, yeah, they seem to just be being chomped by the uh, Lizardmen, so I'm hoping that that's still distracting to the Lizardmen, and I don't want to attack Slanesh here, uh, but if any of my throne rushes go wrong, I will go for that, obviously. I'm sending my um, Banefire King over there, my Elemental Royalty over here, Ruax, is going to deal with this uh, Night Invasion he'll be dealt with. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, I'm not doing anything with my forces in the Lizardman lands for now. Uh, trying to take this one. So, to reiterate, if I take this, that's two points. Basically, I need um, three plus two plus two to win, and I need to hold all of my current thrones. So, I have to have an H3 here to take Greendale, which I have not done. I haven't claimed the Throne of the Sun. I have to claim it. I do have an H3 there, but only one. So that could potentially go wrong. So maybe I should have another H3 over there. I was sending Kiwi Chu down here so that they could um, teleport in or something onto this province, but they can equally well do that over here. So I'm going to send Kiwi Chu back to this province as well. So there's a second H3 there. I do have an H3 here to claim this throne, don't I? I've got Falafel who can claim it. That's it. So I'm only going to have one H3 there. Hmm. That's actually that's actually probably more of a risk here. So I'm going to leave Kiwi Chu here. Have I got any other H3s I can move? The answer is I've got Skrulk over here building a temple. Mm hmm. Hmm. Not ideal. Could you go home, Skrulk? Yeah, you go home. I can't teleport in because my own dome's going to stop me from doing that, but I can walk someone in if I've got an H3. It's annoying I lost my Grey Seers recently because they, um, they could claim it. Can gods claim thrones? I can't remember. If they can, then that's not a problem because the god could claim the throne. I think gods can claim thrones, actually, so that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I think they can. Okay, that's fine, and I'm just not going to worry about it, basically. I'm still kind of in the stage of, like... It, it, I'm not super invested <laughs> into like lots of orders for this game. I'm doing enough to keep playing it, you know, and maybe I'll win because of this throne rush. But um, yeah, I'm, it's okay if it goes wrong. Uh, doing some more forging and the like and uh, sitting on my massive piles of gems because uh, I would just end up feeding them to Lizardman. There's nothing super effective that I could be casting with them right now. And uh, yeah, I'm fine with that, basically. I could throw a Murdering Winter on here, but it's just full of undead. You know, it's, they've just done all of this undead summoning over there with their god, the Great Enchantress. So um, that's a bit annoying that they so heavily reinforced that, but what can you do? There are other thrones I could go after, but um, if I can hold this and take it, that's a two-pointer. So I will then claim this. So I'm not claiming it this turn, but next turn I can claim this one. I can claim this one. And once I've stormed this, I can claim this. So that would be enough to win. And then hopefully I'm also in having taken this one, I can also try and claim this one so that I'll have more than enough to win to uh, go over the edge if I can. And if any attacks or anything have happened to any of my thrones, then I will attack the Slaneshi throne and I will just go to war with the lizards immediately because uh, I'll just attack them wherever I can. Lots of remote um, stealthy troops attacking, assassinations, spies doing uprisings, and I will basically go for their thrones as well. So there's a throne there, and there's a throne here. I have no idea about this one. I'm sending a scout to have a look at that, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, and there's this throne here. So, yeah. This one's actually only got a palisade, so potentially I should have just attacked this immediately. Um, and it would be a good distraction to get the Lizardman going for it. But I've, I've finished with this turn. It's fine. So next turn, maybe I'll be doing that. Okay, I hope I'll have some cool stuff to show you next turn. I hope the throne thing will go well, and maybe the game will be coming to a conclusion soon. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hello, hello. It's turn number 69. Nice. And this is probably going to be the turn that I try to end the game. Um, it's really late at night, and I don't have a super long time to uh, record this. I didn't have a very long time to take the turn. I kind of forgot about it. 
Uh, but let's go through it quick. So I threw up some domes. I cast 300 seconds to throw a fort up onto the um, throne that I took from the shadows. Cast some fire snakes. Moved some of my mages about a bit with um, teleports and cloud trapezes. And uh, saw some battles. We've got Slanesh attacking Lizardmen in the Royal Forest with some ghouls and taking their province back. This is just the counter raiding basically that's going on. We've got a battle in Gwelidun where a Keeper of Secrets jumped out. So this is quite cool to see. I do like the graphic I did for those. Split Spine. Ooh, very nice. Let's have a watch. Yeah, just Province Defense. And he's doing a real simple plan here, which is um, Body Ethereal and uh, going to go in and just wreck stuff. Body Ethereal, Air Shield, Astral Shield. Anything else? Interestingly, they've got their um, Vampire Lord here doing just some spam. Uh, this must have been a magic move, I think. Yeah, this was a magic move to take that Vampire Lord out, so they sent in their Keeper of Secrets. And he is designed just to chop through this stuff and go and try and kill that Vampire. Or at least take the province back, I guess. So there he goes, chopping away. The Astral Shield doesn't have any effect on them because they're mindless, I think. Let's try and skip forward a bit. Keeper of Secrets versus Undead Scum. He's actually missing a lot of his things because his Astral Shield isn't being any use. His built-in ore isn't any use. His fear isn't any use. None of this stuff works on these undead. But um, he's sufficiently tough to kill and has regen that he is just chopping through things. And I think he's not going to fatigue out. Does he have any reinvigoration? He's got a lot of icons. I don't think he does have reinvigoration. But it should be enough. God, look at this. It's ridiculous. Just keep skipping through these rounds. And he does kill the vampire. Um, I think that that vampire, being immortal, will just be back, but uh, a victory nonetheless for Slanesh. There was a battle in Inarim. So this is our battle. We'll do the battle in world first. So this is another magic phase one. This is um, their demon prince has gone out. Very similar kind of equipment. And he has been sent out to deal with another vampire lord. So let's see how this works out for them. There's a little bit more province defense here, so maybe they'll be able to get a route. I don't think so, though. So he's using Holy Avenger. Holy Avenger is actually quite a good thing to have on. Um, although, you know, it's kind of an underrated spell. But in this case, it's not much use because he's not really going to get hit by the undead. Oh, he did get hit once. So Holy Avenger has started procking. He has got the regen going. I think he could use a bit more reinvigoration on these guys. Might help him out a little bit. There he goes. Much less skelly spam this time, which is interesting. I wonder why that is. Ooh, he's broken past a group of them. He's chopping his way through. There goes the Lizardman commander. And the vampire's not going to be able to keep this up. So that is two dead vampires. Well played by Slanesh. So let's look at our battle. This is actually uh, quite a wild battle. So we have, this is our attack on the air throne. We've got Drop Buff the Vermin Lord, well equipped. He's got um, good uh, shock resistance um, and some weapons that hopefully will be good against the Watchers. And then we've got our Queen of Storms. Uh, they've both got good magic resistance because they're items that have got regen. She's got pretty good shock resistance, 29. I think she still can take damage from shock at 29, but um, she's got the regen to make up for it. And she's got some nice protection because she's got Iron Face. And these two smashers are specifically for killing inanimate things. So let's watch. So we get off uh, Body Ethereal and Mist Form over here. This is their side. They've got their one left, who is uh, Body Ethereal himself, and they've cast Army of Giants. Oh, so these guys, do they get enlarged by Army of Giants? Well, they've certainly cast it, Army of Giants. Phantasmal Army. So this is, Phantasmal Army was not what I scripted them to do, but I think, um, I think it was Thunder Ward, but they won't cast it on themselves because they've got too much uh, shock resistance, which is a bit unfortunate. So the Watchers are firing here. Our Queen of Storms has gone at the back to try and take out some of these Watchers. anti magic has gone off. We've got Soul Vortex up on this guy. He's going to keep coming forward. Hopefully she'll be able to get some hits in on these. You can see when they shoot her, they're actually doing quite a bit of damage. And she's got a Never Healing Wound already. Yeah, it's surprising how effective they are, given she's got such high shock resistance. 
she has started to hit them and done quite a bit of damage, but watches are very, very tough. Uh, at full strength, 80 hit points, I think. Never healing. No, so they've got 100 hit points, I believe, built in. Yeah, 100 hit points, basically. A swarm has gone off. That's going to be difficult to deal with, but Soul Vortex will be good against that. So they are still shooting their lightning shots. Uh, against me. I've been, Trufflepuff's been hit with a Petrify, but he's getting through things because of his high shock resistance. The um, lightning bolts aren't doing much good. Queen of Storms is still doing okay at the back, but she's now getting distracted by targets that are much less uh, of a good option. Strength of Giants is actually really good on Watchers, uh, but they are going to run out of ammo soon. And they've been focusing on the person they should not have been focusing on there. So Petrify, even if you manage to resist it, he does have very good magic resistance. You can see 21, well, it's pretty good anyway. Um, he could have done with another magic resistance item, really. But, um, yeah, when Petrify, even if you resist it, because if you resist it, it doesn't kill you, but you do still get paralyzed for a while, and he is, uh, yeah, he's turned to stone, he's paralyzed. Yeah, not ideal. So he will come out of that, but oh, an Earth Elemental can come out and trample us as well, that's going to be a bit of a pain. So they should be running out of ammo around now, I think. Queen of Storms has still not killed one. Oh, there she goes. She just killed one. So she is starting to chop through these now using her smashes. Petrified again. What a pain. Anyway, because of the Soul Vortex, he's going to uh, get his health and re his health and um, fatigue will be fine. She's just chomping away at the back here. They've run out of ammo now. Another swarm cast by the Monolith. Still got plenty of gems to cast annoying things. The swarm's actually fine because the um, soul vortex will eat those up. It just converts them into useful stuff for our vermin lord. Let's put this on fast now. So the vermin lord's getting pushed around and fighting the earth elemental. She is fighting against earth elementals. Absolutely destroys them with her smashes. He's managed to kill his one. The watchers are starting to go down now. He's moved into combat with the watchers, but has been petrified again. Kind of running a bit low on time, but the queen of storms is just chopping through these watchers slowly but surely he's doing okay he's petrified again. every time he becomes um unpetrified the monolith will just petrify him again because that's the best spell it can cast okay i think so queen of storms doing great she has now been petrified but that leaves him free to um get some hits in i think he's using a firebrand yep so his firebrand is doing very well against these watchers chopping them up petrified again for the queen of storms it's looking good though, you can see watches are just going down bit by bit. Oh, Massive amount of damage, 998. This was Stream of Life cast. Just managed to get through the magic resistance. A bit of a lucky uh, occurrence for the monolith there. And we're petrified. Travel Puff is. Come on, every time he breaks out he just starts chopping them. Swarm, that's fine. Soul Vortex can deal with them. Stream of life over and over again, stream of life, but it's just not managing to get him. We're being lucky here now and resisting that many stream of lives. The Enkidu are running, they've routed the enemy. Fascination, Blade Wind, good lord, he's casting all kinds of things. The Monolith, it's down to just Truffle Puff and the Monolith. Come on, Truffle Buff. Paralyzed misses, Earth Grip hits. Stream of life fails, stream of life fails. Stream of life fails again. He keeps hitting it with that armor-piercing tangle vine stream of life. Good lord. He's nearly got it. Just a few more big hits. Oh, he got petrified. But he's stopped casting now. Yeah. Stream of life and dead. So we win. We lose our um, Queen of Elemental Air. There's no one there to pick up our items. That's a bit unfortunate, but... We do take that throne, and we have now got a Holy Three in position to make a capture attempt on it. Lots of bloods hunting, and then we see some regular movement Lizardman battles. Uh, Vampire Lord just moving along, taking out some province defense. Here, um, raid by some Null Scales. And over here, some more Null Scales. So just raiding and counter raiding between Slanesh and Lizardman. I think Lizardman have basically won the war, but their Slanesh is holding on and it's taking a while, which is a very good distraction for me. Um, the remains of the Wood Elves make another attack on Ulthuan and uh, attack from Ulthuan and fail, I think. Yeah, battle in Palami. And um, there was a battle in Midland. This is us attacking Independence. I think this is just us. Yeah, okay, this is uh, our 
elemental royalty just dealing with these knights but they're immediately routed i think their commander must have been dead from something strange i don't know what it was anyway they're gone we also have a battle of the fortress of sulfuria we already know they've already moved all their stuff out they've got basically nothing left except i was wrong they do have something left they have Azhag the Slaughterer left. Now, this in fact was a little bit of a risky manoeuvre, therefore. Nefele, the Queen of Clouds, is not necessarily going to beat Azhag. So she missed forms, so for a good start. She is well equipped to fight Azhag. This is a very well kitted super combatant. Summoned up an air elemental. Air elemental goes in and starts fighting Azhag, and. Uh, He's hunting it down. He's doing very well against it. Hasn't taken any damage. No, but he's pretty fatigued. Meanwhile, we've nipped in and taken some stuff from the back. And then it's just going to be Azhag against the Queen of Clouds, I think. So another epic showdown. There she goes after the troll. In goes Azhag. Azhag misses. So she has a bit of an advantage here because she doesn't have to hit him with the firebrand to get him with the fire. He has not got any fire resistance, so he's going to get nipped by that, which he did just then. He is regenerating, but she's going to keep nipping him with that firebrand. And he is very tired. He's fatigued out. So she just needs to land a big hit with it. She's failing to, but she's got the stone bird as well. God, he must have really great defenses. Yeah, very high protection, very high defense. So yeah, he is... He's a tough one to get, but she is taking him out. He's not really able to hit her. He's too fatigued out, and he keeps getting whacked. I think it's overcome the regeneration now. Yeah, he's picking up afflictions. Oh, the mirror image has popped. Mistform's popped too, I think. She's regenerating back. She's killed Azhag. It's just the Wyvern now. Lands another hit on it. Wyvern's not going to stand a chance. Another hit. Fighting on, trying to avenge its master. Skullmuncher. The archers are doing nothing, and that's that. This province is taken, so we can also try and claim the throne here. So, speaking of which, this is what we're going to do this turn. I really haven't spent much time on this turn at all, because I think that no one's really noticed what I was doing, or they're not prepared to do anything about it. And so, if we look at the Thrones of Ascension... I currently control Fortune, Fire, and the Silver Throne, so that is six points. So I need seven points to win. Can I get seven points? Well, I've got this throne here that I have had for a while but haven't bothered to claim. That is a three-pointer, Throne of the Sun. So we're going to have that, so that's three points. We're going to claim here. We've got um, Falafel the Charmer claiming here, and everyone else is kind of protecting him. Kiwi Chu is teleporting out to try and support the uh, Gambit over here for Inner Eames Throne. So that's another two points. So that's five points. We just need two more. We can get two more from here, Inner Eam. We are claiming this throne here, the Throne of Death. We've got uh, Mortal Forces teleporting in there, and I'll have a little bit more province defense. And we're also claiming the throne over here, Lost Canyon Range, and three red seconds has put a fort up. And we are putting up two domes to protect that. And we're also cutting three red seconds here to put another fort up to protect this one. So I think that we are good. In fact, I um, am I, have I wasted some money? I should build some slaves or something with my money. I think I... Well, I'll just uh, free up some just won't recruit some mages this turn or something just to free up some uh, cash where have we got some mages we're recruiting yeah let me just free up some cash because we should recruit some boys here I think not going to have very many but just a little bit of uh, stuff to hold up walls if we do manage to get the fort there so yeah, that should be enough. It should be two points more than we need to win the game. Even if one of them goes wrong, therefore, we should be okay. Uh, so I think that we have won the game. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. And I'm not really doing anything else. I'm just leaving everything else researching. I could be doing like, okay, well, I'll attack the Lizardman because I may as well because I'm trying to end the game anyway and so on. But I just decided not to. I didn't have much time to do the turn. So I basically just decided to claim the thrones and everyone else is just kind of doing research. Um, and... Uh, 
level, we have enough, nearly enough to get evocation up to level 9, which would have been a nice little goal for me, because I don't very often get to level 9 things. Don't do that very often at all. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be everything for the game. Um, so we'll see. And uh, fingers crossed. Thanks, guys. It's turn number 70. The question on everyone's lips is, did we win? Well, let's have a look. We have claimed the throne of the sun. We have claimed the crystal throne. We have claimed the throne of death. And we have claimed the throne of air. So it's looking pretty good. Let's just go through the rest before we uh, do a victory lap. So we put up a dome, cast more to pit breeding on some archers, just throwing some stuff around, teleported Kiwi Chew to support at the throne of air. Threw up more domes. Look at all these domes going up. We would have had good defences if people had been trying to teleport in and stop us. This would have been very useful. We use remote uh, 3 weird seconds to throw a fort up on our uh, throne of air. And then we see a magic phase battle between Slalesh and the Lizardman in Ironwood Forest. This is their demon prince, who is equipped simply with the Black Steel Helm, Ring of Regeneration, Ring of the Warrior. So simple, simple stuff. But he is very strong. He has... Um, Enormous strength. Yeah, that's a good strength. Wow, look at that. Strength 27 off the bat. Um, and yeah, very strong built-in weapons. But he's just up against a Vampire Lord, so this is another teleport in to deal with the Vampire Lord situation. So he's going to have to get through all of these skeletons. What they could really use here, actually, these um, thugs they're sending against them. I mean, I think he'll prevail anyway against the Vampire Lord, but a Fire Shield would be very useful against these skeletons to really just chew through them quicker. But the Vampire, although he's... Uh, able to put out quite a few of these he just fatigues out if he had um, a basic kind of reinvigoration item boots of the messenger is a nice one to put on a vampire then he might be able to just time the battle out or wear the uh, demon prince down by just casting so many undead but as it is the demon prince can get you the undead pretty quick let's hurry through this just turbo through it even when you're on the fastest speed, you can still press N and it'll skip even faster through that round. Come on, vampire. Oh, there he goes. Well done to Eathor Hellflare, the Demon Prince. He's done really well for Sun Ash. And I've really liked the way that they're using um, Cloud Trapeze and Teleports with their Demon Princes and their um, Keepers of Secrets. It's been really cool to watch. Then we've got a bit of blood hunting and the like, and then we see some battles in the regular battle phase. We've got a battle in uh, Batamore. Um, Law Scales fighting against some fairly tough province defense, uh, and they actually take some losses there. The Soros of Tepok, they're the kind of teleporty ones. And then Ipriskia, let's have a look. We've got a Vampire Lord against just province defense. So he should win, but Slanesh has put in a bit more in their province defense here. You can see that this is, uh, so this should be 20 points of province defense they've put in here because they've got the second commander and the um, the one marauder that they get by doing that. So I think that's 20 province defense. I think that might be enough. Let's watch. So yeah, the long dead are doing well, but there's just not enough of them and they're too spread out. So the uh, infantry will just push through them. They'll get to the Vampire Lord. And then the Vampire Lord himself is quite good at a fight, but he's fatigued out. So he's just going to get stabbed up. Down he goes. A spear is as good as a stake in a situation like that. Then we've got a battle in Palame. This is the High Elves attacking us. With a, a very weird force. Uh, a High Magus leading a bunch of ghouls and they immediately retreat. I guess because he doesn't have undead leadership, so how was he leading them in the first place? That's weird. I don't understand that at all. Anyway, let's not worry about it too much. Bunch of unexpected events. War Shamblers in the Great Blue. Winter has come. Warpstone seam reopened because we have a laboratory there. Another Warpstone seam. Get some gold. Some gold. This is actually a turn with a, quite a lot of lucky stuff here. Ooh, and then a lab shrank our oh, pestilence play chance. Oh, I want to see him. Is he gone all mini? Where are we? Let's look for a little one. Look for a little fella. Where are you? Which one was it? What was his name? Farchesk. Farchesk, are you all small? There you are. I didn't even see. Oh, look at him. He's adorable. Look at this little lad. Rename you. 
itty bitty little ratty. We've got one of our um, scouts is discovered and killed, fine. And one of our scouts is discovered and killed there by uh, a Slanash group. Yeah, and we get attacked by some war shamblers who take over one of our underwater provinces. But it doesn't matter because, as you can see down here, victory has been achieved. So let's put the message up. Shall I do a dramatic reading of this? It, I think that's a nice thing to do. You reign supreme. You are the Pantocrator. Your enemies are cast down, broken, dead, enslaved or imprisoned. You are the sole author of fate. You summon the tides, dictate the seasons, give or withhold fortune and life, light up the sun at dawn and quench its fires at dusk. All move according to your will. Endless eons pass. But then, at some unknowable time, there is a change. Something stirs in the void. You perceive something, something reminiscent of the ancient longings and doubts you thought forgotten, perhaps suggestive of a sight unseen or a tune unheard. What is this thing, this longing, this faraway fleeting enigma? You lift your presence from the world, ascend from the thrones and rush into the void, racing after that receding, beckoning something. Born on wings of absolute authority, you race further and further away, chasing that sole thing that you do not understand, still further away, leaving the world behind you, it becomes a fleeting memory, a distant dream, a tune unheard, a sight unseen. Down on the world you left behind, old servants and enemies feel their chains loosen. Doors thought forever shut slowly creep open, and ancient things long thought dead stir. The thrones sit empty, but hungry eyes have turned their gaze upon them, sensing a new dawn. What a nice little uh, ending message there. It's in previous Dominions games, at least in Dominions 3, I can't remember if this is in Dominions 4, when you won... <laughs> it would just go um, victory. You didn't get a nice message like this, and it just dumped you to desktop. <laughs> didn't even let you carry on, like look at the map. But now we have this cool thing: view history. So what this does is it shows just the provinces. It shows the flags and stuff spreading throughout the turns, and it shows the dominion spreading. So let's watch this. Let's just watch it in real time. We'll zoom out. So where are we? Where are we? A little ratties. Here we are it's from Skaven Light. You can see us spreading out. Spreading out, spreading out, spreading out. Now, about now, I'm going to pause it, is when I think we had our war with Bretonia. This is the first thing to kick off. You can see everyone else has expanded pretty well, but we actually got pretty good expansion. Um, yeah, I think our expansion was... Oh, the Orcs did, I, did well in expansion, actually. But I think our expansion was pretty great, and that was because I had that Awake Pretender that was doing pretty well right at the start. So we come down here, we start stealthing our troops in, and then... This is where we start attacking them. So we're attacking them here. We attack them down in Thornwoods. Do you remember this? The first Bretonia War. And we're going to have this fantastic, huge battle in the White Peaks. That was really fun. And I think that's just happening now. And then we come back and take White Peaks. You can see they've been carved up. Ogres and Dark Elves. Bretonia doomed. Ogres finally take them out here in a big apocalyptic battle. And then we, barely having finished that, have already invaded Eldorf with a massive uh, sneak attack with the help of the Dark Elves, and we sweep away Eltdorf. We also have a little war here where we suddenly sweep into the Lizardmen. You can see all these flags changing colour, and then we give a bunch of stuff back to redraw the borders, but we've got good borders, lots of territory, and then of course we go after the Orcs and Goblins. This is much less of a sneak attack, much more of a gradual taking of their territory, where we just go after their forts and things, we make sure to secure this throne, and then we go after this throne. So we can see the thrones claimed there, we take this, we've taken all their provinces, and that's the orcs and goblins dealt with. And then, Bazinka, we take all the, dirt, the uh, thrones. Right, that's the end of the game. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, I've enjoyed playing. I think I got a bit burned out at the end, obviously. Uh, that's partly because... I just had so much territory and I wasn't really engaged in wars and I think war is the thing that keeps me kind of interested because on a uh, on a tactical level I really enjoy like the mid game um yeah and I find the late game has a lot more stuff this is definitely late game at the end here you know we were researching we were nearly at nine lizardmen had all kinds of spells they had arcade nexus up um you can see the lizardmen were doing really well at the end they're taking loads of slanish territory um but yeah, I hope it wasn't too much of an anticlimactic ending. Um, I wasn't, you know, playing 100% to win throughout this entire game. But at the end, I just felt, well, it's a good way of drawing the game to a close. And it would be, um, 
you know, in the competitive spirit to go for the win, so I went for it. Uh, I'm kind of glad it paid off. Yeah, pretty cool. I think man of the match stuff, obviously I decided during the course of this game that the Skaven, um, their events that give them gem income were way too strong. Those have been significantly reduced. Uh, I made some tweaks to some of their other troops and um, generally a few more nerfs to the Skaven. I changed their assassins to not be one um, commander point to recruit, but two commander points to recruit and a bit more expensive. So I made quite a few nerfs to this game. I learned a lot during this game, um, had a lot of fun. I hope produced a lot of fun battles. And I've talked to some of the other players. Obviously, they've seen the games ended now. And uh, I've had some good feedback from them that they really enjoyed it. They had a good time. And that's really all I care about is just that people have a good time playing with my mods. Um, it's a really nice feeling. And yeah, it's just nice to be able to share it with the people watching on YouTube. So Thanks for watching. I hope you'll keep watching some other videos. Maybe I'll put up another game series in the future. And uh, I hope you all stay healthy, happy and safe. So bye for now. Having said goodbye, as a little uh, addendum, I thought I'd just quickly click through the score graphs because they were revealed at the end of the game um, so that you can have a look at them. Um, yeah, just pause it and have a look at them. I'm not going to talk about them really, but pause it and have a look if you want to. So. You can see all the different colours. I'll just scroll through so you can see who is who. I'm the brown, obviously. And these are the score graphs. Oh, yeah.